when we talk about these data brokers, um, there's a lot of different types of definitions about data brokers. However, um, the most famous definition, uh, which is coming by the Vermont, um, the data broker law and also California state data broker law, those are the two main um, data broker law that we can see at this point, is that um, about this, they are the business, actually they collect and sell information to the third parties about the information that they don't have direct relationships. So let's just say that here, the most important thing is about the direct relationship. So if you obtain information, not from, uh, from your customer itself, then you are not a data broker. So basically if Amazon collects information about their customers, they are not a data broker. Facebook, if they collect an information about their own customer, they are not a data broker. So that is why Facebook is most of the largest data broker that we can see who sells information to other parties. However, they are not considered as data brokers because they collect information about their own customer and their customer base is huge, right? They own Instagram, they, um, they own their Facebook, their platform itself, and they have, sorry, the, um, the AR um, devices as well. So their customer base is huge. And so they are not considered as data brokers. One more thing is that um, based on Vermont state definition, if this company is an e-commerce company, then it's not a data broker as well. So e-commerce companies are not also defined as a data broker. I, so, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. Why Why not? Because e-commerce companies, actually, um, that is also considered as collecting their own customer information as well. And also, if that is collected by uh, electronic means, then they don't consider it as a data broker. So these data brokers are the only one that who can, um, who actually bought this information from third party, which they didn't collect it by themselves. So it's very, very, so there is a huge literature um, criticizing this definition. And one more thing I want to say is that, uh, I would just say that uh, in the later part, even though um, data brokers are required to be registered in um, two different states, California and Vermont, it's not really, um, there is not that much incentive or enforcement um, to be defined or um, announcing as a data broker. So it's a very loose definition. I will go over this part a little bit later. However, um, this is the definition of data brokers at this time. So um, they collect a lot of different types of information and this information cover almost every US consumers. And actually those informations are uh, mostly indirectly obtained information based on the definition of data brokers. However, the real, um, reality of data brokers are a little different. So they also collect this information pretty much directly most of the time. Actually, they buy it from people as well. So um, they're, um, I don't think that this is a um, perfect measure, but based on this report, they say that there are more than 4,000 data brokers. And um, one of the major data brokers action and Axiom is collecting information and analyzing consumer data with more than 23,000 um, servers, what they are mentioning. And they have like 500 million consumers worldwide and 3,000 data points per person. Um, and also they um, say that Equifax owns like 38% of Americans' pay stubs. Um, most of the cases, what they do is that they actually buy this information from the tax reporting softwares. So you know that TurboTax, um, they ask you to unload your pay stub. Even Equifax itself has a function that you can unload your pay stub. I am also using one of the app, but um, you might also use the app, um, which is called, they changed the name actually, the, uh, the Rocket Money. So it analyzes my spending behavior. Um, also that part, they requires me to unload my pay stub. This information uh, might worse a lot. However, it's a little different from what you imagine. Uh, Max has a question here. Do government jobs get filed on Equifax? Um, government jobs um, is a pub, um, government pay stubs are actually um, public information. So if you wanna know about my pay stub, which I earned from um, California State University, uh, you can just access it to 
uh, with California state um, government. Same websites. thing at Rutgers. Every salary mm -hmm. at Rutgers is published. Mm -hmm. But you right. you said something here that puzzles me. Axiom, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. uh, three thousand data points per person. Mm -hmm. So is that the way they organize it by person? Actually, this is uh, coming. Um, I just want to mention about this part here. Those 3,000 data points means 3,000 different types of characteristics and attributes of the person. Um, they no, differ the, people. The, the question is, my question is, is that the basic organization, the primary key, a person, and they identify the person by social security number or by telephone or by email address? Or uh, this is just one of the ways that they characterize the data? Because if it's all person oriented, it's very interesting. Actually, um, <clears throat> Axiom can also have information about yourself with your social security number. However, there are some people who doesn't have social security number or very carefully not revealing that information as well. So that is why they are having these 3000 data points to infer the characteristics of that person and then provide the most um, preferable targeted advertisement. So you can just think that these um, 3,000 data points can act as a um, composite key. So each of these data points will be just like a um, characteristic about yourself. Like where do you live? Um, like what um, kind of race you are, what sex you are, um, and what kind of age you are, and what kind of job do you have? However, if they combine these 3,000 data points, then it can be a way that uniquely define your characteristics or even your identity as well. So that is why they have these a lot of different data points to provide targeted advertisements. Professor, is there any uh, literature where they take this sort of data and they use it to train AI? I don't Actually, know. There is, a, I, there is a paper. I was, I, I was, yeah, that's why one of the questions is, meaning this must be a better way to calculate GDP to maybe this, you think they would let us use Axiom for GEM? I think that um, I should go back to the paper. I think that was a paper in marketing science. What they do is that they obtain this information um, from a third party data source, and then they try to calculate the accuracy to identify that person. So there was a paper about the accuracy of this information. Um, I will share with you, but I think that they didn't um, obtain that information directly from the data brokers, but I will double check about that part. But there is a paper, yeah, which is very similar to what you mentioned. So I think that it can be applicable to um, the GEM project that we have. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge kind of market. Um, there is also a survey about how like much this information was. The most um, interesting thing that I can see here was about this part. Can you see this part, um, data coop? It says that, um, actually data coop is a company, is a New York based startup company. Uh, what they ask is that they ask people to share their personal information and their social security, uh, social network information and they collect this information. And um, these are like one-to-one -one mapping about your identity, right? And they pay each people $8. So they paid $8 per month to provide your information. So basically this is the equivalent price, like um, how people value their own information. I'm not sure. Um, would you actually share your information by obtaining $8 per month? I don't know. Would you spend $8 to find the telephone number of a cute girl? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, more than that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's or, that yeah. is. This is, but this is about my information, right? This is um, people are um, willing to share their information to this company data group by um, earning $8 per month. So this was a price that they actually um, put in. Uh, I tried to go to this website this morning, but um, their website was not working. I'm not sure whether they are out of business. However, this was the amount. Um, that they were rolling at. One more thing I want to show you here is that, can you see this number? 43% of data brokers allow customers to open up for free. Well, they, this... they, uh, they, they might have uh, legal issues that the people say, I don't want to be there. They might sue or something like that. So allowing to opt out is probably, they have to. 
Right. Actually, I'm going to go this part with the state, um, the California and Vermont state law a little bit later. However, they are requiring these data brokers to show um, how they can open up from that information. However, it's showing that only 43 percentage, right? Also, we did, um, David and I, <laughs> David and I did a similar uh, kind of analysis about this part. Uh, almost half of these data brokers are not showing the way that how we can open out information or providing information about the cookie collections when we enter the websites. So this is a pretty um, accurate results and also aligns with our part, but this is against those two state laws. So basically you can just see that this like whole industry is pretty much uh, unregulated. And they actually collect a lot of different types of information about yourself. They know about your income, they know about your gender, education, right? And uh, I gave you the, uh, the example before about this part that when I just get married, um, I just got a lot of advertisement about divorced lawyers, right? Just after the day I just got married, I just got a lot of advertisement. I don't know how data brokers define myself, but I think that that is the way that should define me. If I get married, I might think that, think about divorce, I'm not sure, but um, there is a huge kind of this characteristics. What they do is that based on this information they collect, uh, a lot of cases, they use it for targeted advertisement. So based on the information that they have about yourself, they send out the advertisement that perfectly uh, fits, fits you. So let's just say that if you are um, like Asian, just before the new, uh, new year, they will send out a lot of gift suggestions on the advertisements um, um, based on your income level as well. So they have a lot of different types of targeted advertisement techniques. And um, that is why a lot of these articles are very, very um, commonly published in marketing um, literature, however, not that much in accounting. But you can see that this is a huge market. And also this is one of the main business activities of the digital platforms, right? So I think that as the auditors, we also have to take a look what kind of information they collect here. And also what can we utilize for um, um, our assurance services as well. So I told you that um, there is not that much regulations that relate to, to this industry.